I don't think it's you. And, and all anyone's asking anybody to do is listen to the evidence. But the extension of that, from my perspective, on behalf of the senator, is if, if, if an insanity defense was presented to you, and you have supported that, would you be able, by extension, to be able to find someone not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes. Okay. Um, Juror number 59, what about you? Now, I, I don't know if I've got a chance to ask you about this question or about this subject. What, what is your thinking, ma'am? Yes, I think if there was evidence to support it, then yes, I would find someone innocent by reason of insanity. Uh, so you recognize that uh, there are mental illnesses that are out there in our community, like it or not, and, and if the evidence supported it, you could, in fact, find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes, sir. Okay, would you have any kind of reservations or second thoughts once you got got to that point, or is this a, a strong feeling you have that you could follow the law in that regard? I could follow the law. Okay, would you have, uh, again, this is not an easy question. That's why we're spending so much time talking about it. Uh, do you have reservations, or are you comfortable with what you just stated to us? I'm comfortable with that. Okay, thank you. And I think juror 57 already asked you the same thing. You said if there was evidence, you could, you could find that, correct? Or did I, am I thinking of someone else? No, you asked me. Okay. It's not really comfortable with it. Typically, no, but it still may be ramifications after the fact. So when the judge read that instruction to you or that, that law to you, that actually eased your mind about it? I was pretty sure that was the case anyway. I didn't know for absolutely. Right, gotcha. I was pretty sure that, that was the case. That Okay, so if the evidence supported such a finding, you could find someone not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any equivocation about that or any reservations you have about that? No. Juror 53, what about you? How do you feel? I don't know if I've asked you about this. You have. I feel the same as the gentleman you said. Okay. If the evidence supported it, you could find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity? Um, and, and again, I, I, I want to push these things to the extreme to find out what you guys are really thinking, but if I asked you, could you always find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity, no matter what, or if I said, could you never find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity, no matter what, you wouldn't support either of those, I take it. The evidence has to be there, and then you feel comfortable? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any, else, any other ideas that you have that you would share with us or any other thoughts that you have as we're talking about this subject? No, sir. Okay. Jurors 39 and 42, I think I already asked you this question. Yes. I think 74, I already asked you the same question, correct? 83, did I ask you? You did not, but yes, I agree that I could find someone not guilty by reason of insanity. And, and for you, as a potential juror in this case, um, how would you make that decision? What, what would be your criteria? The evidence presented, if it proves the fact that they were insane. Okay. Okay. And would you have any reservations about that? Is that something you'd feel uncomfortable about? I'm not uncomfortable with that. Okay. Juror 86, I know I haven't asked you about this subject. What is your thinking, sir? I wouldn't have any reservations for personal bias. And now you listen to the instructions from the judge and let off isn't exactly what he said. If there's, he'd have to make a decision. That would be something different, right? Yes, sir. But when my question to you is, would you be able to find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity if the evidence called for that in your, in your mind after assessing the evidence? Yes, I would be able to. Would you have any reservations about that or would you feel uncomfortable in any way like, oh my God, they're forcing me to do this or forcing me to follow this law that I can't stand or something like that? No, sir. Okay. What do you think, Juror 87? Before hearing the judge read the law about it, I had reservations because I felt if the defendant did, once, if she was found not guilty, that she would just walk away. But after he said that he could send her to a, like an asylum or something else, then I'm okay with it. So I, I think I, I would be okay with it. I think I can, I think so. Because my issue is justice. Is justice gonna be served for the father? Uh, would you feel uh, compelled to, to look 
to uh, be sympathetic to somebody, one in person or another in this case? To be honest, to be completely honest, I'm sympathetic for the father because he's the one who's really the one that lost something that's complete, completely valuable to him and he no longer has it. But at the same time, I do believe in the insanity plea also. But, and I think I asked you earlier, you said that you also believe in presumption of innocence? Yes, sir. And, uh, but, but let me ask you this. Uh, and look, people feeling sympathetic towards someone, that happens in life every day. There's nobody saying that you shouldn't or you can't or whatever. But one of the things that would be told to you and instruct you, you shouldn't be deciding a case based on anger at somebody or sympathy for somebody or uh, you know certain factors that the judge will read to you eventually. And I, and I know that uh, you just said that you would be sympathetic to, to the father and, and that's fine, but my question to you is, would your sympathy to the, to, toward the father um, cause, to have, cause you to have some kind of a bias one way or the other in this case? Do you feel like that would kind of tilt you over in the direction of, of this, the, the, the state, the accusers, because of your sympathy to the dad? I can't say yes or no. Well, you're the only one that could say yes or no. That's why I'm asking you. It's hard to say yes, it's hard to say no, because I'm just speaking of the dad. Okay, and, and you think that's a, a pretty um, <coughs> inflexible opinion you've had? You, you have that in your mind as we speak today? Yes, sir. Would this be something that you could would have trouble setting aside if you were selected to be in this jury? Would you always have that feeling of sympathy? I think so, yes, sir. And, and if you had the feeling of sympathy, would you think that it would cause you, like I said, to tilt your views to one side or the other? I would try not to, but I, I can't say for sure that it would or would not. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Juror 88, how you doing again? Good. Uh, we've been talking about uh, mental illness and specifically insanity as a defense here in the state of Florida. Um, if a, an insanity defense was presented to you, if you were on this jury, would you be able to accept insanity as a defense if the evidence proved it? Yes. Would you have any qualms about that, any reservations or second-guessing yourself or anything of that nature? No. Um, would you feel like somebody was forcing you to, to follow a bad law or follow something you didn't really think was right or good? No. Okay, you'd be okay with it the whole pro if the evidence showed it? Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to tell you, manufacture something. I'm just asking you if the evidence was there, would you feel comfortable with such a, an, an opinion? Yes. Okay. Um, how about you, Juror 89? What do you think? Um, you had a chance to think about what some other people's comments were. Do you share some of those comments, or do you have, what's your I opinion? I take a pretty pragmatic and logical approach to things. Um, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I don't possess any degrees in those fields. Um, having said that, though, I don't believe that insanity or mental illness can be used as a blanket excuse for any or every action. However, at the same time, I don't believe that there isn't some forms or times where it's severe enough where the action is resolved as a cause. If you're selected to be in this jury, to what or to who or how would you look for direction as to whether it existed in this particular case? Since I have very little to no background information on the case. Well, let me ask you point blank, would you be prepared to listen to the evidence? That's, I mean, that, that's how you that's would. the base reason that I'm here to but if I wasn't, I would have tried to get myself to qualify and we, we could have gone home. There'd be no point for this. And, and my question to you, and I think I understand what you're saying, and I, I just want to make sure that you, you tell me, just so I don't misunderstand you. <coughs> um, do you feel that sometimes insanity or not guilty by reason of insanity would be called for, but sometimes it would not be called for. Absolutely. And so if you're prepared to go either direction, you are prepared to say that you could say not guilty by reason of insanity, or you could say, no, I don't believe that, depending on <coughs> your view of the evidence. Am I hearing that from you? Correct. Is there anything else that you would say that maybe I didn't paraphrase correctly or, or paraphrase well? No, I believe that was uh, the sentiment. Okay. Any, any other thoughts you have on this subject while I'm talking to you? Not, not so much at this time. As I said, I've, I've listened to everybody. Um, I understand some people's approach to it. Uh, I don't understand their approach to it. As I said, unless you have all the facts, and 
I'm not an expert in those fields, so those facts would come from somebody else. Other facts, you know, be a forensic or something else, would come from somebody that possesses those degrees, possesses those expertise. I'm and of course, you get the law from the judge. Correct. And you can use that too. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm here to listen to everything and decide based on that. I don't rule anything out, and I don't accept anything for, you know, for granted either. Okay, thank you, sir. Juror 98, I don't know if we touched on this or not with you, I'm not sure, but just in case I'm losing my mind or something and on, the, on the memory part of it, what did you tell me or did I ask you this? I, I accept the standing as the uh, valid uh, defense, but I will need to know when that person was found insane and with all the evidence that was there to go along with that. You know, I, I think there's things, there's things called temporary insanity, I don't know. <clears throat> But just because it happened, you came insane when it happened, or uh, you were already insane. So, well, yesterday, Mr. Pruner endeavored to give you some background on what the actual uh, definition of insanity is, and I'm not going to go over that with you today, right now. But trust me, the, if that comes to your attention as a juror, the judge will make you very, very aware of the law, and then it's just a matter of plugging in the evidence that you hear, the testimony that you hear, and see if it fits. Right. And if it fits, my question to you is, if it fits, and if you think there's evidence there, enough to support such a finding, are you able, without reservation, and with, with a comfort zone, be able to find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity? Of course I could, yeah. As long as the evidence is there, it's overwhelming, then no problem. Okay. Um, do you have any other thoughts on this that maybe I didn't flesh out with my questions? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if it's a case or a murder case. Are well, we judging her insanity? Are we judging, is it two different things going on here? Well, at, the, at this point, we're trying to prepare the potential jurors for anything that could happen. Okay. So we're talking about all of this. And you'll have to, if you're selected to be in the jury, right. you have to then pay attention to the evidence and the witnesses, and you'll, you'll certainly understand what, what the situation is. And then I, I hope you don't think I'm copying out on that, but no, this no, just no. isn't the, the time we would discuss those kind of, that kind of thing. Not at all. Okay, thank you, sir. Juror 101, I'm, I'm back to you. Uh, what do you think? If um, everything fits to the letter of law for the insanity plea, then I could find myself going with it. Now, did it? No reservations with it. Okay, and, and let me ask you this. Did the instructions that the judge read to you or the law regarding uh, that insanity, not guilty parties of insanity, did that set your mind at ease a little bit? Would that, would that have been one of the concerns you would have had similar to, to your 139? Was that a, a concern you may have had at some point? I already knew that. You already knew that, okay. So you're comfortable, if the evidence supports it, that you could find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity. Yes. And it wouldn't be like somebody's twisting your arm behind your back or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, you only lean over, I can't find out who you are. You're 106. Uh, what do you think, sir? Uh -huh. I feel like everybody else, well, I'm not everybody else, but I feel that I could go with the law. You know, if they want, if it is justified for insanity, I would go with it. Did Judge Battle's reading of the uh, the law, the, the rules about uh, not guilty by reason of insanity, did that set your mind at ease at all? Yeah. Were you concerned about the lack of consequences or lack of something beyond the trial if, if, if such a decision came, came about? And, and after listening to that, you're, no, you're not concerned about that? Yeah, yeah just clarify that. Okay. Um, and, and again, my only question to you is if the evidence supports it, I'm not trying to talk about whether it does or it doesn't, you guys have to make your mind up about that. If the evidence supports it, are you able to find someone not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes. Okay. Um, how about you, Juror 108? Um, I feel the same way. You, you, uh, you feel uh, comfortable with, with such a, a feeling about that, or do you feel like somebody's kind of forcing you to follow what you consider personally to be a bad law? No, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with that. You know, and, and, and I, I ask this question because, you know, our job as citizens of our country and of our county and of our state is, of course, to follow the law. That, that's what our job is. I mean, that's, that's, we're citizens here. But sometimes you find people in the course of, 
uh, casual conversation or even maybe observe people and say, well, you know, I don't really think that's right, so I don't really care about it. I'm not going to really worry about it or follow it. That's not uh, really an option in this situation. So I want to find out if, not only if you could follow it, but if you're going to secretly say to yourself, oh, man, well, I know I should say I should follow the law, but then later on when I get, you know, get, get there, I'm just going to go back to feeling that I don't like this. And so that's why I'm asking you all if you're comfortable with this approach. I'm not saying to you that you've fallen in love with that defense or any other defense. I'm just saying if the evidence supports it, can you find our, our client not guilty of of insanity and feel that you've done, you've enforced the law or, or done your job as a, as a juror just as efficiently as if you, if you found that she was guilty, uh, you know, if it was no defense. In other words, either way, just depending on what the evidence says. That's what I'm asking you all. How do you feel about that? Juror 111, do you feel the same way? Juror 113, what do you think? Do you, you agree with this, the, 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 the feelings that people have been expressing? Pretty much, yes. Uh, as an attorney, you have to excuse me, but I'm usually uh, attorney to say pretty much. Because I'm always wondering, what part do you not agree with? So how do you feel about this? Now, now you know differently, or at least it's your, your mind is set at ease. You feel more comfortable now after hearing Judge Battles give the instruction? Well, I was fine with it from the, from the beginning. I had no problem with it. Oh, okay, you felt that other people may have had their minds set at ease from listening to that. Right. I, I was just saying from when I said the most part, I could hear some who were. I got you. I got you. Thank you very much. Juror 118, do you have a, you want to weigh in on this subject? How do you feel? forcing you to reluct it in some way, or if, if the evidence shows you. And again, that's the, that's the variable that, you know, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not, then you get to decide that. But if it's there in your assessment, are you comfortable with making such a, a decision? Yes, if the evidence is there, then it's very clear to me. Okay. Now, would you feel that you have the same need for clarity for evidence presented by the state of, of, of guilt? Well, I mean, what I'm getting at is that there's the same urgency for clarity and for detail on both sides of the tables here. Judge, may I object and approach, please? You may approach.
And uh, if the evidence is there to support such a verdict, then you're comfortable with rendering that verdict. Did what the judge read to you, did that ease your mind any, or were you already aware of that? I was already aware of that. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Juror 164, uh, I know I haven't asked you this question yet. Could you stand up, please? Um, do you have an opinion about this? You've heard the other people's offerings of, of their opinion. Do you, do you share that, or how do you think about it? I, I do share what they are saying, as long as the evidence shows that it could be going towards reason or you know, insanity, then yes. And then also hearing what Judge Battle said gives me, I feel more comfortable with that. Do you feel like you could follow the law then? So you wouldn't have any problem. You wouldn't feel like somebody was forcing you to to uh, follow a law you didn't care for, and didn't, didn't find very popular. No, it, it was a bad law, and we should have gotten rid of it. But no, it's, it's I have to follow. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Juror 162. How, how do you think about this? I believe it's my responsibility to come in with an open mind. <coughs> Let the evidence pull me in the direction. If it pulls me towards insanity, I have no problem returning that verdict. If it pulls me toward guilty of premeditated murder, I would have no problem returning that verdict. Thank you, sir. Juror 160, how do you feel? Uh, the evidence is there. I, I support it. Would you feel comfortable rendering a verdict such as that if, if the evidence was there? Would you feel like somehow or other you were being forced into it because of some following some law that you didn't agree with <coughs> philosophically? Okay. You recognize that there's there are mental illness is present in the communities and you consider insanity to be a valid defense? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Um Juror 121, uh, what do you think about this? Are you reluctant in any way, or do you have any concerns? Yeah, have the people back there stand up, Council, so uh, okay. I appreciate that because she has to be able to hear me. Okay. Do you have any concerns, or uh, I know that, for example, Juror 139 expressed some concerns, or do you have concerns as well, or do you feel comfortable the, the position you just stated? No, I don't have any concerns. I feel perfectly comfortable. Did what Judge Battles read to you, did that set your mind at ease, or were you already aware of that? I was already aware. Okay. Thank you. Juror 128, what do you think? I agree with 121. Okay. Um, did what the judge read to you, did that help ease your mind a little bit, or were you already aware of that? Okay. So if the evidence supports insanity as a defense, and not guilty by reason of insanity, is a verdict you could return? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. How about you, Juror 135? I, I heard it put it in a Stand up, please. Uh, way. I heard it. Put a number of different ways, and uh, I uh, agree with uh, all of them that uh, it's a viable defense. Do you feel that if the evidence was, uh, in your mind, supported such a defense, you you could um, you could render a verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes. Okay. Would you feel pressured to do that, or uncomfortable, or feel like you were having to contribute to a bad law or anything like that? No, I believe it goes to a state of mind. If it if that falls within the, what the law allows for uh, what would be considered uh, uh, mental disease or defect, or that was the reason that the conclusion was drawn, then I have no, no reservation about that. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Juror 136, what do you think? Um, I agree. I have no reservations about it. Okay, you have no reservations at all? Okay, thank you. How about you, Juror 141? Um, I agree. Uh, I could find that as an acceptable, not guilty uh, verdict. I, I have a question, though. Uh, so the way that we're supposed to approach our view of the defendant um, in terms of guilty or not guilty, we're supposed to assume that she's innocent until proven otherwise by the state and the prosecuting team. Um, but, uh, 
Insanity is not a charge, it's, it's a defense. Mm -hmm. And are we supposed to view the defendant as sane, if we're insane? Well, you haven't received any evidence about any of that yet, so you'd have to just consider what comes to your attention. But, but like, if, if, we were picked, if I was picked as a jury member, would, is, it, is it my job to view her as sane until proven insane? It would be your job to consider any of the evidence that, that comes to your attention and then listen to what the law says. The law, the judge would tell you what the burdens of proof would be, and they'll tell you um, what the law is concerning insanity or concerning the other questions you might have. You just have to apply what you hear from the witness stand and the testimony to what the law is and make up your mind. Excuse me, may we approach? Yeah. Finding someone not guilty by Thank you, sir. Juror 142? Yes, as I have stated before, I believe the person is uh, uh, innocent and to be guilty. I believe the burden of proof is on the state. I believe um, that's the reason why I was asking if we could ask questions about the law because I was actually pertaining to mental health and to the insanity defense because all the evidence is going to be given to us. I want to make sure that I get the proper interpretation of the law so I can properly apply it and make a correct decision. That's fine. Thank you. And, and I guess my general question was, if the evidence supported it, could you find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes, yes, Obviously, sir. if it didn't support it, that might be a different story. Exactly. But. exactly. I'm tr I truly want to be unbiased, and that's why I wanted to make sure that I could ask those questions and make sure the law 
law is interpreted to us because I feel I need to make the correct answer for everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, juror 145, I uh, haven't talked to you this afternoon. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Could you yeah. stand up, please? There you go. Um, I believe that it has to be proven for insanity or non insanity. It just depends on the evidence that is put in front of us in order for me to make the correct uh, decision. And yes, I, I can be, if she's proven uh, insanity, then yes, I can go with it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Juror 147, do you have an opinion about this? Yes, I also agree with the majority. I would be able to consider it if all the evidence pointed in that direction. Okay, would you have any qualms about that or reservations? No. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Juror 148, do you have an opinion on this subject? Just that I would weigh the evidence and uh, decide depending on the defense and if you found that the evidence supported insanity, would you be able to find somebody not guilty of raising insanity? Yes. You wouldn't have any reservations or qualms about that? No. no it's not some law that you find internal. What did you have to do? Juror 149, how are you today? Good. Uh, I think I talked to you earlier today. But do you have an opinion on this subject? I agree with the majority of the folks here that I would also weigh the evidence. And if it was uh, proven to me that she was guilty, then I would go that way. And if she was proven to me that she was not guilty, then I have no problems with that at all. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Juror 152. Um, what do you think? I have no opinion. None? Not really. I was a little confused about, I still am, but I'm sure it's clear enough. It was alluded to by juror number 141. Who the burden of proof rests on uh, when, when they uh, claim of, uh, or the defense of uh, insanity is involved. But again, I'm, I'm sure that would be clear. If, if, um, if you listened to the evidence and you were convinced that uh, uh, insanity was present, would you have any philosophical issues with following the law and finding somebody not guilty by reason of insanity? No, sir, not at all. Thank you, sir. How about you, Juror 157? Um, I would definitely consider it a, a defense. And I played all the evidence. Okay, would you have any philosophical problems with it or any? Reservations? No, no. Did Judge Battles read to you? Did that uh, help you I think about it? I was familiar with it. It just confirmed it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. How about you, Juror 158? Yeah, um, I definitely believe that insanity is a very real thing and that it can be used as a violent defense. Um, all of the burden of proof has to be very If you found that the evidence supported such a verdict, could you find somebody not guilty by reason of insanity? Okay. I talked to everybody here except some people in the back row, I, and I want to ask this. Does anybody in the back row differ in their opinion from what the, the other folks on the jury has been, the jury panel has been saying? No, You all feel the same way by a show of hands? Okay, thank you very much. Um, <coughs> Judge, if I could ask just for one moment. Thank you. Yes, sir.
of you that are in this room have on your uh, jury information sheets put down that you yourself or someone that you know, a loved one or a friend, were, were at some point in time a victim of a crime. And uh, it's not always specified in the form as to what the crime might have been. It could have been something like the car being broken into, or it could be something more serious than that. I don't, I don't know. But my question to you as a group, um, first of all, let me ask by a show of hands, how many people in here have been the victim of a crime at some point in their life? Several of you. Uh, my question, and, and this is a blanket question, and we can certainly talk individually with people at, at, at some point if, we, if, we, you know, if you want to, but did your experience um, being a victim of a crime, does, does this in some way, shape, or form uh, affect your ability to be on this jury? And, and by that I mean, did something about the experience, maybe something about um, the, the guy that stole your car stereo was never caught, or something about the way you were treated in the criminal justice system even though you were the victim, um, some, something having to do with that case, does anybody here have, did anybody here have such a negative experience that they would then say, well, you know what, I want a jury now, I'm gonna, and, and somehow or another hold it against either Ms. Schenker or the state of Florida, either way. Uh, because again, we're looking for people that can be fair and impartial. So my question is, and, and, and again, if, if there's something that you have inside your mind and you want to, we can talk you know, privately, or just by a show of hands, is there anyone here that uh, the experience that they had when they were a victim of a crime in the past themselves, would that in some fashion or another in your mind um, give you pause or reservation in terms of trying to be a fair and impartial juror in this case. Uh, and, I, and I'll give you a second to think about that. You guys can all remember your, your personal situation and uh, it's never fun or never a good situation to be involved in, in things from that end of, of it, but did anything in that experience, would you bring that here and maybe make the Jennifer pay or maybe make the state of Florida pay because you didn't think you were treated fairly by police officers or by the, by the courts or anything like that. Is there anything that anybody has in their mind like that? Uh, you all have been here for about five days now, or just the better part of it. Um, and, and what you have heard is that this is your last chance to talk to us and this is our last chance to talk to you other than the forum of actually put, doing the trial. And then we won't be able to talk to you. So I, I guess what I want to ask you at this point is, do any of you have any questions that, um, or some concern that wasn't raised by Judge Battles or Mr. Pruner or me, something that you've just been dying to say um, to somebody in, in hopes of you know, clarification or maybe something that's inside of you that makes you feel like you wouldn't be well suited to be on this jury. Yeah, that's still out there. It's not too late to say that if that's really the case. You know, I'm not trying to push any of you all away. I'm just saying, is there anything in your mind that, that you feel uncomfortable about that you would that you should feel like you should express now before this part of the process is over? Does anybody have anything in their mind? Uh, so in the next week, would there be a chance of sequester? Probably not, uh, but you know that, that'll be decided later. But typically, no. Okay. You'd be here during the day, though, if you were selected to be on the jury, right. just like the, the schedule that the judge mentioned earlier. <coughs> Does anybody else have any thoughts or, or questions for any of us? Yes, ma'am. Question: How long is it expected to last? The whole process. It was projected to last about three weeks, but that includes this week. So you're really looking at the week of May the 5th, and I believe the week of May the 12th. And, and uh, that's how you could project your schedule. Okay? Anybody else have any questions or thoughts? Okay, thank you very much. I don't have any other questions. And with that, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be sending you out into the lobby uh, for a break that I believe will be for a reasonable period of time. Now, as I send you out, first let's remain in the lobby so we can be lined up ready to come back in uh, when, we're, when we're ready to proceed. And let's remember again, and 
I'm going to remind you, you know those very important instructions. While you're out there, you're not to discuss this case or what we've been doing in this case. That is, the questions and the answers to the process itself. Not to discuss any of that among yourselves, not to discuss it with anyone else. You're not to allow anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. Not to read or listen to any reports about this case from any source whatsoever. Of course, not to speak with the attorneys, any witnesses, dependent about any subject until the deliberations are complete. And not to gather information about, communicate about this case people or places involved or your jury service through any means, including all those uh, electronic devices. With those very important instructions, we'll send you out for another break. All right. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. All right.
simplistic fashion we're going to go through in the selection of our uh, uh, panel of 12. Once we've selected our panel of 12, either by the acceptance by both parties or the exhaustion of our peremptory challenges, we'll turn to the selection of our four alternates. Alternate one, two, three, and four to be used in that order should it become necessary. Again, we'll continue in numeric sequential order of remaining available prospective jurors, and uh, each side will have one peremptory per side exercise and use in the selection of each of the alternates. You understand that really simplistic selection process? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. All right. I'll give you an opportunity to consult. Well, wait a minute. Let me go ahead. I indicated I would. I'm going to go down the list now of uh, the list that was current as to the panel before us as of this morning and uh, my reflection of what has already been uh, decided on a cause basis. If I miss something immediately, correct. Six, seven, twelve. 36, 55, 61, 71, 81, 84, 87, 115, 139. <laughs> That's it. Is that what you've got? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, everyone's in agreement. Let me know when you're ready to proceed. We'll step back out and uh, continue. Yes, sir. As a practical matter, um, is there uh, are there rooms available outside of this courtroom that is extensively mic'd up and open to the public where we could uh, have privacy for our consultations? You're talking about right now? Yes, yes sir. Well, no one's supposed to be recording your consultation at the table. Uh, but if you, and, and, and I've taken everyone's adhering to that professional responsibility. If you wish to step outside here, I'm absolutely sure that there are rooms here on this floor uh, where you can go in and sit down if you, if you wish to step out. Well, I, I do know there is one jury room. I don't know what else is on this floor because I don't get back into the chambers of power often. Well, I haven't, I, I haven't sat down with Judge Menendez and said, can you give me a floor plan? No, I understand that. But I'm sure if you step out here with the assistance of, uh, of our, our court deputies, they can find uh, they can find you a place. Okay? Thank you, sir. Yes. On for both sides. Okay. Now I'm sure you'll want to do that in the presence of uh, the Schindler, so that would have to be arranged consistent with the, uh, with their obligations for security. Let me know when you're ready. Thank you. 